Good morning, everyone. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So I'm here with Karthik. He's well, I'm on the beach. I'm in the water, actually. <laughs> I can take off the background. You're the tree, Karthik? <laughs> You let your hair grow out again. <laughs> hey there. So, uh, come closer. <clears throat> Is that it? Who's coming? I think that's us. It's just us. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Have you, I don't know if you've been inviting Shang Wei. No, he has a meeting often at this time. Okay. Because we, um, when the semester's over, we can consider rescheduling so that everyone can attend. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be happy to have them. Yeah, so we can reschedule. It's fine with me. Um, yeah, I only just saw your email, Tammy. Um, yeah, I suppose uh, we can be more systematic about it. But I was expecting that this week, we talk about what I wanted to talk about last week, which is can we start thinking about what we want from our modeling work to go into our report and presentation. And next time, Karthik wants to do a dry run or get our feedback on his paper ideas. <clears throat> um, and then I expect after that, we're just gonna want to be concrete about accomplishing contributions for the report and presentation. Uh, I think that's going to be our focus because there only will be a few meetings before our in-person at that point, maybe two. And, and Karthik and Raidul from last week wanted to, or or maybe it was after the group meeting, wanted to talk about um, use of Karthik's data to represent heterogeneity because I think Karthik has some ideas. And he said he was going to talk to you about that, Narasimha. Yeah, we didn't talk in depth about it. Um, maybe we should talk about that a little bit now in terms of what exactly we're trying to get at. Um, I think that's going to be part of also what we want to frame for the the meeting or our outputs because it's an important boundary object, right? So we want to say something about what progress we're making on that. Um, Do you want to start with that? Yeah, I, I could probably add to that. I think the broader question was just how exactly Rydal and you would be using the data. And if there's any way we could make that more seamless or more rigorous, just, just a conversation around that. So I think absolutely. Uh, let me say one thing. Narsima, is it okay if I say one thing about the presentations first? Actually, I, that would be best if you do that, because you said you were starting on Thursday working on that. Short, because I, uh, I don't know if you've taken a look at the outline, but everyone, if we, everyone will have only a minute and a half to present, and so I feel like just I, I, at least the the junior researchers, and I I would like to see everybody present for a minute or two minutes or somewhere in there. But I feel like um, the best thing we can do rather than talking about what we're gonna present is just move the work forward. And then as we go, pick up like, I. this is a great thing for the presentation. I, I feel like it'll be a lot of time that feels like administration if we talk too much about the presentation. And I think it'll naturally emerge if we talk more about the um, about the progress, do you disagree? Um, a little bit, but I'm not really sure because I mean we are working. On, I mean it's all going to be work in progress, mm -hmm. right? And that's why I feel some clarity in trying to have a vision for what we think we've accomplished or where we're going. Yeah. 
is useful, but if you think, um, you know, the question of how much you want to team source it, you know, this is mm -hmm. maybe you're just in your mind, you're, you have this bird's eye view and you're trying to uh, pull it together, you know, but if we're going to all, for example, present for a minute each, what are we going to pick to present? You know, this, uh, and, and, and probably how we present it should be influenced by the overarching frame of the presentation, right? I, ag I agree. I think, though, there's going to be some iteration. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel this way until I put out the outline, and then I thought, oh, it, it's just, uh, I, I think as we go, we um, will... I, I, so I think if we ignore it, we're not going to come up with a good result. If we just go along and talk about work, we won't come up with a good result. But now that we know we are seeking a presentation, as we discuss, we can pinpoint this figure or this interaction between people uh, would be a great thing to promote. And then yeah. into the outline. And as we're, as we're talking, um, and then say, who's going to present it? And so I think if we're if we're looking for those opportunities as we discuss the work, I think it'll be more more natural and it'll help us move the work forward. Um, because I think we're going to be thinking about both at the same time. So if we take this heterogeneity thing, for example, now we've been talking about it for a while, and I know that your interest is in thinking about how how does the population divide on terms of specific variables. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about operating energy, right? And then you've looked at rest talk and looked at archetypes. Uh, and, you know, how you do divide the population, you know, it's like a clustering question, you know, how strongly do they divide? And you can pick that for any variable. So the question is first, what variables we want to pick initially that are going to define our dimensions of heterogeneity? And I think you've already picked them for your model. It seems right, uh, and then the question is: Do we have from our data uh, some initial clustering of households for those particular variables? So I think that I think that would be the great discussion that we were going to have with Kartik. So okay. over a month ago, Kartik prepared these heat maps, and then Raidul presented his. Uh, ABM, did, did you get a chance to look at the presentation from last Friday, Narasimha? Was it not the same presentation that he made to us on the Tuesday? Because he did go talk through his model then. Yeah, it was more. It it was it was it was similar. Yeah, but it but um I think I didn't see the recording. No. The question came up. Um, how are you gonna How are you gonna populate these? And and we populate them from Kartix data, and then but I think we're doing it in a bad way, um, and and so I think this this discussion about heterogeneity comes up when we say how can we um, how can we choose just as you say clustered data, but how do we sample um, probabilistically? In, in a region from data that we think um, exist. And one of the, the I'm, I'm not saying this very well now, and I, and, and I think the best thing would be just to delve into the data. Um, but I can say that in order to create, um, like say one Puma, uh, and the heterogeneity within that, I've done something that I should not do, which is I've assumed that there's no correlation between any of the variables. And and we've always been hinting, Kartik and us, right, that we can do better from his data. And I think that will be a relevant discussion. Now, I think with in terms of the home archetypes, we're not... Um, we're not archetyping them. We are just choosing them based on input characteristics like size of home and age of home. 
because we figure that's the best correlation with building energy, right? But if those characteristics then correlate with other things, then we expect to see a correlation. Now, maybe you disagree with that. Might be a house quality yeah. variable too. So, I mean, you, do you know you know the variables that they want to look at, right? So we, I think a few weeks ago, we came up with around 15, 20 variables that we were interested in. So I think we all pulled together a Google document where we threw in variables that we thought are interesting based on our own experiences. And then that's what I made a heat map of. The correlation between all of them, right? All, all the yeah, interesting. I remember things. that, yeah. So that's what we have right now. So the next question is, how do we move forward from that? So are we going to make okay. some judgments about, okay, these two are super correlated, so maybe we should drop them. What next? that because there's some subjectivity in the choice and there's also some yeah. component that can force. Yeah, okay. so we're really ready to take advantage of that. We're very close to being ready, right, Raidul? But the data I've given Raidul are a, a poor mashup of what he gave us. So we have this, say, 15 variables. We have this correlation heat map. And let's say we find just X number of variables are highly correlated. Yeah. OK, so that means you can pick one of them uh, potentially to represent those five. You have another bunch of variables that have low correlations. Now, there would be some cross product between these relations, these variables, of course. You know. So the question is, is the end goal, do you want us to pick a set of variables uh, that are important to model because they have, are not correlated to each other? And then from then figure out how to cluster the population within Colorado as a cross product of these three variables, for example, that we pick? Is that the end goal? Well, when you say we, I think we as a group. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this pr procedure is going to iterate, but I think here's what we ought to do. Um, first of all, I think we've got some questions about. Um, so, for example, th there's a variable heating fuel and heating equipment. Now those have to be correlated because not every fuel uses every equipment. And so I'd like to, I, I'm not sure what you call this, but rather than having how many people are in each group ha have like the clusters among those two. So that's just an example, but so create sub clusters, right? Uh, yeah, so you have a large number of um, gas fuel customers will have furnaces. Mm -hmm. It's only a question of whether they have a furnace or a boiler. But in Colorado, most likely they're not going to have any boilers because they don't have water distribution in their homes. That's so they, that's, that's what, that I'd like to see that from the data because yeah. we do. Mm -hmm. apparently have some that are called hydronic anyway we can get that's a small detail but so the first step would be to create subclusters i don't want to dive into the specific details right now yeah create subclusters but subclusters besides the number of them what other characteristics are you interested in we're trying to find out how many you have of each type of these yeah so i would like to look at kartik's heat map to determine what the subclusters are, those things that are highly correlated shouldn't be separate variables. Yeah, that's fine. But maybe we can decide, do we treat this as a cluster variable or do we treat it as a separate variable? But so from the list that we came up with, I'd like to identify, and I, we could do this today, I'd like to identify which things um, which groups are are truly clusters and which are not? Does that make sense, Kartik? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I've always shared the data, I think, as CSV, so we could just go through the Excel file or just visually and just identify. Yeah, yeah, you shared the visual data, but then I'd like to see, like, I want to operationalize it now. And yeah, so, so the CSV file, too, so we could, uh, I mean, you are, we could read that into like, any programming thing, and then you could make more objective decisions. You could have a cutoff for the correlation and then come up with a list of variables that are you know highly correlated, and then we can make clusters out of them. And then I think we should talk about in principle, when and why would we cluster something? So, um, so I think, for example, heating type, uh, distribution system and fuel, that those should all be clusters and they then we should just have um, prevalence of each cluster, right? Um, however, if you find, and this may not be true, if you find that people with lower incomes tend to live in older homes, then you might not want to cluster those. You might want to represent them separately um, because then you, you might see effects of being in older homes that do not, or that are not related to having lower income. And, and you would want to know that you hadn't made that artificial clustering um, oh, yeah, there's definitely some back and forth, I guess, that needs to happen. And you know, yeah. you have to make some decisions, definitely. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yes. We've done all the groundwork, I think, but we have not agreed upon how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Also, it depends on yeah how ultimately it's going to fit into your model and what your hypothesis is, right? Because are you trying to model like energy consumption or adoption? And, you know, once get clear about that, then maybe we could have some ground rules what we think these clusters should look like. And then we could go to the data and see what the data tells us and then you know have that back and forth. Yeah, and I think Christina, you're you're very quiet here, but I think your work is going to become pretty relevant, right? Because you're going to find logic find or not find longitudinal effects. Um, where we question, are these just correlation or, or are we going to see that there's a, there's a, a, a relationship in, in the log longitudinal data? Yeah. Although we definitely don't go into the causal aspect of that's what you mean by relations. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, yeah. Away from that, but we're, I think we're, I, I'm going to push us probably farther than we're comfortable because it's so, but w let's wait until we get there. I feel like that that principle is best discussed in concrete, with concrete examples. Okay, so I think waiting two weeks from now to have this discussion seems too far away. I agree. So you wanna set up a separate meeting for that? Or, I mean, I don't even mind spending the rest of the time now on that. It's yeah, so important. And if we need another another time, then we can try to find one. My schedule is really packed. So should we just keep trying to talk about it now and resolve it? I mean, you're saying you have the CSV file. What do you, well, what do you I think, think we, we won't be able to resolve it. You can take a look because we'll get ideas as to like, you know, what's correlated with what. Yeah. But then about Tammy and Ryder are trying to build something. So. What is it that you want to do, Kartik? Uh, I think anytime once you know all of us have got it, gotten a chance to go through the data, like the correlation map data, and then see what sticks out, and then what you and Rai will want to use from that, and then maybe you can come back and have a more you know focused discussion once we've all seen the data, because going through the data now might might not be such a good use of Okay. It, it might not be. So let me tell you that in the next two and a half weeks, I have about three free hours. Well, do you want to just delegate to Raidul and Raidul and Karthik can meet and yeah. I can provide some inputs? Yeah, but no, I actually, I don't. Okay. I mean, if that has to happen, then yeah, I totally trust them to meet. But I feel like this discussion is so slippery. We keep saying we need to have it and it keeps getting away from us that I think we really need to pin it down. So what are your proposals for when, when you're free? 
Um, my proposal is that we do it now and do as much as we can. Okay, we can try. Okay, it's good. Right so, so and I, I totally hear you that, you know, we we didn't take a look at the data. We would do, do better to prep. Mm. Well, let's do it now. Yeah. But I, I feel like the prep is, the, the discussion will help us prep. Mm -hmm. to okay, yeah, sounds good. Uh, remind me where the data are placed. Uh, into it should be on my, I sent an email to all of us. To, sorry, I don't have my computer on me right now. Uh, but You sent an attachment, an email? Yes. Uh, here's the That's link. The the Dropbox link. I don't remember why. And... The drop box is not as an attachment. So yeah, no, the heat, is it the heat map car take or is it something else? Uh it's the I mean maybe the title says heat map or follow up or something. Maybe heat map. I my computers had trouble searching. Is there anyone else who has I got it? Let me share. I'm looking, I'm looking and uh so heterogeneity discussion script to create heat map. I feel like this is too early, maybe. No, I think that might be the one that I everything is in. I sent everything that I yeah, had. I shared it in the message chat box. What date are you talking about? Approximately two weeks, three, four weeks ago, a month ago. Okay, it may be. This may be the one I was thinking of. Yeah, it is heat map. Okay, correlation.csv. Okay. So you can just open the uh, the image file. Uh, can we can you um, try to find this now? What's the date of the email, uh, Tammy? Uh, well, you can't get it in the chat, Narsima. Oh, oh. Carti or no, Ray will just put it in the chat. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> So do you, Kartik, if you don't have your computer, you want me to share a screen with the heat? Yeah, map? sure, Tammy, yeah, go ahead and share. You're right yeah. there with Nurse Emma. Can he, can you we have the file up. We have the file up. Okay. Yeah, I, I enabled the screen sharing. So maybe you want to do it because you know this best. I should have to go back and figure this out. In the email? No, this yeah. is down below. Yeah, the this one. Yeah. I think I'll be all thumbs if I try to navigate around this. Okay. Okay, do you see it? The heat map? Yeah. Okay. And so no. let's look at the ones that are correlated a lot and so you want to look off that window. the blue are the ones that are highly correlated the dark blue dark and blue the dark oh, okay and then and the, the dark red and the dark red are negatively correlated okay and you do want to look off that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah of course so Equipment age. More than five and less than four seem to be highly negatively correlated, which makes kind of sense. So uh, I was wondering what these, can you explain a little bit about what these mean, Kartik, right, when there's, sure. for example, income high versus income low, those are, Going to be negatively correlated, right? But those that that's not meaningful, or what? Yeah, but those are not because if you have three levels and right, so it's you know that's what's happening there. So, but the high, low, and medium are just uh, so with income in the data set is a continuous variable. So I had to just make you know three okay. slides in front of that, and that's the low, medium. Part. 
So similarly for a few other variables where you see low, high, medium, it's just that they were continuous originally and I had well, to. These little diamond looking things we should just ignore. Why, uh, you mean this kind of diamond? Yeah. 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 Why did you not have the continuous variable? So, why wouldn't you want to look at income versus, say, floor space? I mean, I guess if you're trying to model low income separately from high, I mean, you could have it continuous. I mean, it's just, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I would be interested in looking at what is income correlated with in the first place. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't look like it's correlated to anything very strongly. Mm -hmm. Do you have floor space in here at all? Outside. House size. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting that there is low correlation between income and household size. Household size is not members, it's at physical size, right? So this is member size. Yeah, so it's house size is physical floor space. So that's an important insight actually about the house size not being significantly correlated to the income. Yeah, and the, and the uh... Typically at a macro level, you know, people tend to just derive floor space from income with some saturation. But when, hmm. because we're dealing with micro data, you know, with a state level, there's not a very strong correlation. So if, for example, you wanted to model income because discount rate is an important dimension of your model, but you of course wanted to model floor space because you're doing operating energy, then you'd need to have both in your model according to this correlation map. Does that logic seem like the kind of thing you're looking for? Yes. And so they... I would say, given what I've seen of Raidul's model, you'd want both. Yeah, we want we want those separately. Okay, so and, that's the start. So the yeah. Kartik, the N exp, what is that? Low and high? E N G? Uh that's energy expenditure. Energy expenditures. Where is that? Where did it go? It's cool. Yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, so energy expenditure. And high and low is relative to income or no? Uh, just no. the variable itself. What are your cutoffs? It is three slices, three equal slices. Oh. So it's, it's an actual number that you've binned? Correct. Okay. And so it is not, but it's not energy, it's a, not an energy burden measure like relative to income. No, it's not. Although we can do that, but this is not that. Yeah, this is not oh. that. Let's oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, it's just dollar amounts slice. Yeah. This sounds low. So we would want to look at energy burden, I think, but maybe not for your modeling case. Yeah. Uh, so wait, there is a little correlation between house size and income. I thought maybe I missed the discussion. I'm just saying it's a low correlation. It's, but it's stronger than other things, but it, it, you're right. It isn't as strong as that so it's like, colors correspond to. Yeah. But, um, sure. I mean, usually I look for correlations above 50%. But, I mean, it's probably significant, but low. You mean statistically? statistically. So there'll be a lot of noise if you were to, yeah, treat them as equal. It would be an approximation. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were interested in equipment, for example, because I think equipment's important for the, at least for efficiency. Sure. Right? Fuel plus equipment. Uh, so, so one interesting question is, if you have a central furnace in the data that we have, is this only Colorado? This is national. This is national. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now are you interested in looking at just Colorado? Because national may not be representative of Colorado. Well, let's let's take some uh, conclusions from this and then check Colorado since we don't have it here. 
Partake, is it hard to generate this one for no, color? It's easy to it's easy. It's just a filter. Yeah, so. yeah, it'll be interesting to look at both, but definitely, I mean, if you are doing Colorado, you should do it. So I was curious if central furnace pretty much equates to gas, which is not mm -hmm. technically necessary, but it may be the case. Yeah, so I I would like to see those separate crap. My computer's out of battery and I lost my cords. So if I disappear, <laughs> you know what happened. Um I would like to see I I Kartik, I will write to you separately about groupings that I think could be useful mm -hmm. for a combination of heating fuel um heat and heating equipment. And mm -hmm. I'll copy in Raidul and Zara. <coughs> Because I, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think those need to be grouped differently, and then we mm -hmm. just won't be making any assumptions. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I mean, if you right. ignore the diamonds along the diagonal, It could be that we just need to focus on a few of these dark spots. It's a little difficult in such a big matrix, but we can make a list of the ones that have high correlations uh, off diagonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now it's hard to see such yeah. a gigantic. Yeah. Owners and not owners. Mm -hmm. And what is this? Uh, HFL number fuel will use. What is that? No. no. What's the HFL before? Uh, heating fuel. So then you do No fuel before. Yeah. What does that mean? Heating HFL, no fuel use, meaning? Uh, they didn't report the fuel. For heating. For heating. Yeah, so um, I, I, I think we can handle um, heating fuel, et cetera, offline, because that's relatively it's probably not very controversial um and and i feel like that'll be a fine email discussion are there things that we should discuss now um that are different than that i think we should just agree on what we're going to now pull out from this so i think pulling out the off diagonal dark colored combinations of variables as having high correlations is what it, we can yeah communicate and then uh conversely if there are particular combinations we're interested in like how like you know income flow space for example we can pull out the exact correlation so we can make a decision and also how you want some of these variables to be shown right like yeah, for example continuous ones i bin them so maybe you would want to bin them separately or bin them in more more than just low, medium, high, maybe you want 10 buckets. You know? yeah. So there's some choices that I had to make. So we could revisit those or do them differently. Depends on how you want to ultimately use those. Yeah. Um... Okay, so Karthik will pull out these high correlation combinations. Is it can you and Raidul think about what pairs you're interested in from the modeling perspective? And then we can look that up and he can run it for Colorado as well. And then um, do or we you can look it up too, but yeah. Think okay, do we yeah, for sure for sure we can do that. And then do we think that um Kartik, I know your your other work is looking at the influence of or looking at well-being holistically. Mm -hmm. And remember I've said let's just pick let's pick one thing, maybe one type of insecurity to include. Right. Uh, and and so I would suggest we do that too. So this one already has it. So for example, on the left, the first entry is you know travel insecurity. The second one is food insecurity. So these are the ones yeah, with same variables that I've been using. There you go. Okay. So energy insect should also be coming down there. And Kartik and, and Raidul and, and or and and 
maybe just everybody, we're talking about pulling out high and low correlations. I feel like correlate, like what's a strong correlation varies extremely in different fields. Can can you share Kartik from your from your work um, what you think of as a correlation that where one should begin looking and not ignoring? Uh, I think from a social science well being literature, I think anything that's statistically significant is significant. So p values of you know the classic zero point zero five. I know engineers. And like more technical fields do it differently, but if you're trying to sell it to a well-being crowd, then that's been my experience reading that, reading you know that literature. But I think that's something different. Yeah, I feel I feel like if it's it's different. If if one thing is really causing another, then you should get a correlation, and so we might expect to to look for something stronger. But there's so much variability here. So point five, and this is correlation and not R squared. Yeah, this is correlation and not R squared. Okay. So I think another, okay, how size? I guess I might, I might propose some clusters of heating equipment. I might also, Raidul, tell me what you think, but we might also think about building type um, detached or not. I'm not sure. I don't see any correlations in the age, but you didn't bend the ages, Kartik. You just got like decades. Yeah, so that's it. Yes, so we, yes, I could bend it to like it. Yeah, we could do it differently too, but yeah, that's, I think that's a native way to add it. As it is right now. Because I think there's going to be some, um, it, they're already showing up, right? Some significant, uh, uh, how do you say, relationships between which houses are owned and which houses are rented. Mm -hmm. And th those we want to treat differently. And then Zara has found that that those buildings have, of course, very different energy use per square foot. And sometimes the mismatches are greatest. Um, and, and we understand the least apartments that are in large buildings because you know we don't we don't know where the outside walls are going and so on. But they may be of less relevance to our calculations because those might be managed differently anyway. Mm -hmm. It looks like a house size seems to be correlated to whether it's owned or not. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. And so I guess a, a question I have overall is how much of the heat pump put, or how much of the switching potential, whether it's heat pump or not, resides within the owned properties? I'm sure somebody knows that, but I haven't seen it anywhere. Most people have studied only own properties with regards to heat pump. Yeah, because we don't, know, right? And so, I, I I realize that that's where the the study lies, but I don't know what population that covers or what fraction of the capacity that is. And I'm sure somebody is 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 aware of that and, and has thought about it, but I do I have not seen it. But that's just um, arithmetic on the Rex 2024, except we don't have Colorado explicitly. But if we were to no, do Rex, not Rex 2020? Yeah, Rex is stating. Rex 2020 is stating. Maybe there's not enough data, but in theory, yes. What census region? I, no, 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 Rex I think is the point at which. Okay. We... Sorry? No, we can calculate that explicitly from Rex 2020. Yeah. But I, I think this is the point at which we split the owned and rented population, acknowledging that we know very little about decision making for for landlords, um, it, but just recognizing that it's it's at least going to be very different. And so we should know 
when it, when we've uh, identified a, a fraction of the population that's going to shift, we should know what fraction that it, it is that's owned, where we have a little more confidence in the decision-making process. Yeah, I mean, this is also a strategic choice, whether you just decide to not do rentals because we just don't understand enough. I mean, you can't, yeah, you feel like, how can you leave them out? Especially a lot of low-income residents are going to be rentals. Um, but we really don't understand decision-making around them. So that, right. That's right. I, I, keep, yeah. That will be a message that requires some finesse. Kartik, I'm also curious, do you have, you have um, occupant age, don't you? I guess it's H-H-H. Uh, H -H -H. Uh, yeah, look, again, low, medium, high, H-H-H. Oh, H-H-H, high or low, okay. And what's that little dot? Because what Chris was reporting was that people were thinking of thinking of their 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 stay in the house the length of time they were going to stay in the house but that okay so that's low okay that makes sense low correlated with member size high because then there may be people who whose children have moved out Yeah, so I don't know if that's a thing to pull out, but from what Chris reported, I am curious about it. I mean, household age does show up in a couple of studies as an influential variable for heat pump ownership. But younger people tend to be more likely to adopt heat pumps or have heat pumps. This one family house detached. Okay. Well, I think we have some have some action items. Like we're gonna cluster income, household size, and or we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of clustering and propose it. Mm -hmm. And and then you're gonna maybe do some of the same. And I would suggest we do that separately and then integrate them together. Yeah, uh, but I mean, sort of a follow up question. So once we have these clusters, are we trying to do the same sort of again slicing by equipment type to find out you know what fraction? Uh, like you know, like we did previously, where I just you know, didn't slice them, didn't slice them along clusters, but slice mm -hmm. them along other dimensions. So yeah. I mean, that yeah. would be ideal where you put out the Puma, you put out the, you put out the fraction that have a certain cluster, mm -hmm. and the levels. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. And then other things we will, so I, I'm guessing the rows we want to assume to be uncorrelated. Or the columns you you had like puma on the row and call or characteristic on the mm -hmm. right yeah before and so we would hope that everything else was kind of uncorrelated mm -hmm. yeah got it yeah it makes sense to me but i i think this is going to take us a while to get it right mm -hmm. But I think this is really one of the activity, the convergence activities that like our setup of how we slice the population is is really important. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So yeah, I think we'll come up with a list of you know highly correlated variables from the seat map. And then yeah, we can reconvene once you also come up with a list based on you know how you want to model them and then. Yeah, I can take it forward from there. Then you want to come up with a number of households in each of those groups? Ultimately, once we agree on what the clustering should look like. Yeah, so I already have 
Kartik, you can probably do this easily, but I already have a process that takes households in each Puma and uh, spreads them out by how many, um, or I think Kartik was giving me, <clears throat> and, and I was just applying household numbers in each Puma. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, we don't, we don't need that merging, but if it's easy, that's great. Zara's got a question in the chat. Do you want to, is that, is it appropriate to discuss that now? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's... What does it mean that it didn't include <clears throat> all Rex 2020 data? Like, did they ignore it or what? Uh, in some cases, Cases they use uh, Rex twenty in two thousand nine in their new data set. Uh, they use uh, sometimes they consider uh, some variable based on uh, Rex uh, two thousand nine, like distribution of windows and other housing characteristics. Mm. Is it because those questions were not asked in Rex twenty twenty? Yes, you said. Okay. Uh, should we consider only Rex 2020? I don't know, maybe uh, there wouldn't any problem, but. Well, it's a good thing to think about. So um, I'm guessing if it's only thing like things like Windows that didn't get asked later, that it's not a problem. Um, as long as the sampling is the same and they're just sampling other characteristics. And know. whenever whenever you're talking about the existing building stock characteristics, it doesn't change very much. So it's probably a fair assumption that the distribution that existed in 2009 would be very similar to what we have now. So well, in the distribution in 2009 of, of say buildings built in a certain year to a certain standard, that's not gonna change at all really. What's gonna change is the new stock. Right, and the thing is the share of new stock, it's not super high at a national level. If you dig down, it could vary by state. Yeah. I don't see a fundamental problem. They have mixed and matched different res stock surveys for a reason. You know, probably, yeah, they couldn't, they didn't have certain variables available in Rex 2020, so they went back. But do they also use AHS in a stock? Zara, did they use AHS, American Housing Survey? Do you know? You're muted. Sorry, you're muted. Uh, yes, they use that as well. Uh, they combined all of these uh, data sets and create dress tags. They have a different variable from different data sets. Sometimes uh, if there is a uh, same variables, they uh, consider both of them. I see. And do you know which year of AHS that they use? Like 2019, 17? Because I'm thinking if they're using an updated AHS, then some of the variables, at least housing variables, are probably reliable and updated, even if they don't use you know, Rex 2020. It's not right on top of my mind. I will uh, check and send you the differences okay. yeah. for that data sets. Okay. okay I, so... I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. <clears throat> I think we have marching orders. Is all I was going to say, I, but I yeah. do think it's going to be, even though we're we're still in the early stages of understanding the data, I think it was useful to discuss and just hear how people would approach it. Okay, so do we do you want to make a date when you both exchange uh, variable clusters or whatever? Yeah, let's set a. Um, Let's set a goal to respond. That sounds great. Raidul, what do you what do you think? 
Yeah, the sooner the better. I have also have something on my mind. I'll I'll discuss with you first. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. So we'll we'll work to make a proposal. Uh, so do you do you want to say end of this week? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry about my terrible schedule. I'm in the middle of faculty searches, and so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Friday by the meeting time, by the group meeting time. Yeah, well, let's try to get at the end of this week and then maybe people can look at it before the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good. That was, you know, productive. So um, next time we will discuss Karthik's paper and we focus on that. Good. Do you, I can just make a tab on our um, our meeting schedule for, for the modeling meetings, and then we don't have to fill it in. I don't want it to have to be so regimented, but if people want to put things on there, then we can, because I feel okay. like I've- Okay, that's fine. Okay, thanks. Thank you, thank you all. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye.